Uh, Nehemiah, uh, I, I have a question here. Yeah. How is hallelujah related to the name? That's a really good question, Michael. I get that a lot. People say, well, if it's Yehovah with an N in the beginning, why isn't it hallelujah? And then we have all these names that end in Yah. For example, my name, Nehemiah. And there's, you know, Eliyahu is Elijah. Why isn't it Eliyah, Nehemiah? Okay, great question. This question was answered by a rabbi in 1834 by named Samuel David Lutzato. And what he explains is actually something every Jew learns in kindergarten. He's explaining this to the German scholar Gesenius, who probably did know it, but was ignoring what he knew. And the rule <laughs> is that uh, when you have a long vowel in the ac accented syllable in Hebrew, that becomes a short vowel called shva or a semi-vowel when it's not in the accent accented syllable. In other words, the pronunciation of the word changes based on where the emphasis is in the word. Okay. And so here's what uh, Samuel David Lutzato wrote in 1834. He says, the kamatz of ya, that's the name of the vowel there, kamatz, changes to shva when the word is elongated. So an example of that would be the Hebrew word gadol, which means big. When you add a suffix to that, it's gedolim, not gadolim, right? It's just like ya becomes ye. Same exact thing happening. Same vowel, actually. Same vowel shift. And then he says, the proof is Yehonatan and his friends. It's a great statement, very poetic. But what does he mean? Every name where yud Hey vav appears at the beginning of the name, it's always Yeho. And nobody disputes that in the history of the Jewish people because there's never been a ban on speaking those names. Let me read you some of those names. Okay. Yehoachaz, Yehoash. It's not Yahoash, Yahoachaz. That's made up Hebrew from people who don't know what they're talking about. It's Yehozavad, Yehochanan, Yehoyada. And you see those names in English, like in the name like Jonathan, which is Yehonatan, right? They drop the H there because of what's happening in Greek. Greek doesn't have an H. Um, there's 20 names that begin Yeho, approximately 20 names. There are many names that end in Yahoo. Now in the father's name, is the yud heh vav at the beginning of his name or the end of his name? It's at the beginning. At the beginning. And more importantly, where is the emphasis of the, of the word? The emphasis of the word is in the final syllable. It's marked that way in all Hebrew manuscripts with vowels. No question about it. All the Hebrew manuscripts with vowels mark it as Yehovah. And what happens because of that is the kamat of Yah, which Yah is always the emphasized syllable. It's hallelujah. Um, that then shifts to a shva or vice versa. You could look at it both ways, right? Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, uh, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? You have this relationship between shva and kamatz, between e and a, based on the emphasis of the syllable. Now, ya appears in the Tanakh 49 times as a, a poetic form of God's name. It appears in the New Testament, in the book of Revelation, four times. People don't realize that, but it's in the phrase hallelujah, which is actually two words that mean praise ya. Um, I do want to show something, Michael, about the relationship between Yah and Yahweh. Can I show that, Michael? Oh, yes, it's, you know, people say, mm -hmm. well, you know, surely it should, should be Yahweh because it's hallelujah. What they're not telling you is they're kind of pulling a fast one. What you could see in the word Yah is that it has the vowel called kamatz. It's like a little T. That Yah is uh, different than the Yah in Yahweh. Now, here's the really interesting, Michael. When I created this graphic, I wanted to verify that what I was saying was right. So I looked up in my printed Bible and it had the kamatz, the little T. And the one in Yahweh is a single line, right? And then I looked up in the Aleppo Codex and I found the little T, the kamatz, underneath the first letter. And then I looked up in the Leningrad Codex and I found the little T, the kamatz. Every manuscript that I could find has hallelujah with the little T, the kamatz. And then I said, how do I know Yahweh has this other vowel that's a single line called patach? How do I know that? I need to look that up in a manuscript. There weren't any Hebrew manuscripts to look it up in. It doesn't exist in Hebrew manuscripts. So where did I have wow. to look it up? I had to look it up in Gazenius' Hebrew grammar and Gazenius' lexicon from the 1830s. And I had to look it up in Brown Driver Briggs, uh, Hebrew and English lexicon from the 20th century and the Hebrew and Aramaic lexicon of the Old Testament from the 20th century. I couldn't find it in any Hebrew Jewish sources. I could only find it in English and German sources. Um, and that's really interesting. And what happens here is you can see Yah, has a vowel, a little t, and, and that's pronounced ah. And then the Yahweh has a little uh, vowel called the patach, which is also pronounced ya, an ah. However, those ahs are different, 
right? You think they're the same in English, but they're not. There's no question whatsoever that those two vowels had a different pronunciation. And so the Yah of Hallelujah is different than the Yah in Yahweh. In fact, in English churches, they pronounce the Yah of Hallelujah correctly. They don't say Hallelujah. They say Hallelujah. And mm-hmm. think of the vowel in yeah, the ya of hallelujah. That actually is the kamatz of the, of that is the pronunciation of that, that vowel, kamatz. And that vowel is different than the vowel in Yahweh. And so when people are saying, oh, it's, it's Yahweh because hallelujah, they're pulling a fast one. They're hoping that people don't know that it's two different vowels in Hebrew. And to be honest, they probably don't know themselves. Um, same thing with, you say, Yahshua. Yahshua, well, well, what, which vowel is that, a kamatz or a patach? You can't have a kamatz there because that's a long vowel. You can't have that so far away from the emphasized syllable. How do I know where this emphasized syllable is in Yeshua? Well, because it can only be the final or second to last syllables. Only the possibilities in Hebrew. You can't have Yahoshua or Yahshua. It has to be Yehoshua. It becomes what's called a truncated vowel or a pretonal shortening to give a technical linguistic term. So there's clearly a difference in the Hebrew language when you read it in Hebrew between the Yah and Hallelujah and the Yah of Yahweh, and the Hallelujah, that Yah, naturally turns into an eh at the beginning of a word like Yehovah, Yehoshua, Yehonatan. That's what this rabbi in 1834 means when he says Jonathan and his friends. You have been listening to Hebrew Voices with Nehemia Gordon. Thank you for supporting Nehemia's Makor Hebrew Foundation. Learn more at NehemiasWall.com.